We're back. Technical difficulties, but you know, take the lie. Uh, podcast going over the 53 man roster depth chart. Uh, you know, of course, the biggest surprise that we had was Lynn Bowden, you know, which is still crazy. Third round pick getting traded. Uh, didn't even get a chance to see the field. So, what did you think of that, PD? Yeah, it's. Uh... I mean, as a fan, you know, obviously it's disappointing. You know, you uh, spend a lot of time, uh, I'm just speaking for, uh, the, you know, the, the film geeks out there pouring through all of his college game tapes. Speaking for, uh, you know, the... But, uh, you know, even the, uh, even the, you know, uh, just, you know, casual fans, normal fans, you're going to watch highlights. You know, you're going to get excited about all the possibilities that this guy could bring to the offense. Uh, so you really have your hopes set on him doing something, you know, him providing some kind of spark for this team. And to see him uh, go before he even gets started, obviously, it's a gut punch uh, for us fans out there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was tough news to stand, you know, but uh, it sounds like, how do you put this? It sounds like he was having a hard time adjusting his personality to the locker room. That's mm-hmm. just some of the beat writers. That's what they're saying, you know, whatever that means. But um, it, it must be a personality thing because, you you know, you watch the tape. The talent is there. He's a he's a bona fide football player. Yeah. And and I, even from coming from Kentucky, I mean, they said he was a, a leader over there and a leader in the locker room stuff. But he's he's the one who wanted to play quarterback, said I could do it. You know, so he's uh, he's he was a team player. So I, I think that maybe it, it's probably some things in the background that we don't understand right now um but because i mean you, even if he can't play running back he still was a pretty talented wide receiver too um i mean he did he did good things in kentucky uh while he was playing wide receiver there so since since that option was there i mean and, and the kick return option i, I think that they could have found a way to, to make it happen if they really did like the kid altogether. but I, I think it was something there that was missing that uh, we don't know about and we don't know about in the background so has to uh, be has to be ha- has to be something with that because I mean it's just crazy that they get rid of a, a third round pick like that and yeah and and then, and then if he if he goes somewhere else and he plays well wide receiver you kind of got to think like well maybe we should have tried to give him a chance there too instead of just trying to throw him as a running back you know what I mean I, just just the positional switch was a head scratcher mm-hmm. you know obviously he had you know probably made, made the biggest impact as a runner obviously with the ball in his hands. Um, but you know, I, I, I had a thread on uh, Twitter. Re, uh, this is, I guess, uh, maybe like a couple months ago. Yeah. And I, I was comparing, um, players who have made a similar transition from either quarterback to running back or wide receiver to running back. And it's just not a great, you know, uh, a great sample size of the possibilities. You know, you got, um, a lot of guys who, belonged in the NFL, but had a hard time, you know, adjusting and figuring out where they were going to play and how they're going to be used on offense. And for the most part, we're talking about special teams players, you know, and even if you look at a Taysom Hill type of uh, situation, I think he averages, you know, like less than 200 yards from scrimmage as a back when he's used as a back. Yeah. Uh, You think about these big plays that he made in in key situations, obviously for new Orleans. um, But you know, the production is just not quite there. Uh, So it, he had a he had an uphill battle as it was, you know, transitioning to running back, playing running back for the first time. Yeah. And and, and I mean, they said he had problems with pass blocking, which would make sense because I mean, he's never done pass blocking ever. Right. right? Uh, yeah. So he had those issues. And but and that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's kind of like you look at those issues and like, well, OK, we want him to do one thing, but maybe that's not going to work. Let's try. It. Let's just cut the ties with the running back and see what he could do a wide receiver. And see if, if he could help out, help us out uh, there in that room. But I mean, obviously, there's something there that we don't know about. I'll tell you. I mean, that that's the big thing here because they just you just don't give up on third round picks unless it's like really, really bad. So you know, and I'm not gonna speculate on anybody's character issues or anything like that. It's not my, it's not my job. But you know, it's it's crazy just for this to happen. Anyways, yeah. it's kind of wild. It's just wild. It's it's kind of it, it, it it's definitely unprecedented. And, you know, the immediate reaction is, wow, Raiders, you know, made an epic blunder drafting this guy in the third round. But, you know, when when I'm talking about personality and I hope that people don't think that I'm judging this guy because I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Lynn Bowden. When I recorded yeah. his tape, uh, I became a, a huge fan of his. And then after the Raiders got him even more so, you know, um, like you're saying, he wanted to switch 
to play quarterback, even though that probably could have hurt his draft stock a little bit. Um, but he didn't end up going in the third round. So, you know, I think he's a selfless player. I think he's a fantastic football player, you know, but when we're talking about personality, like think about someone like Amari Cooper and it, he never fit in, right? He never seemed like he really wanted to be in Oakland. Yeah. You know, and it's not like, you know, this guy, we're calling this guy thug or, you know, like like a character <laughs> issue or something. You know what I'm saying? It was just like there yeah. wasn't the right place, right time for him. So uh, I hope that, you know, in Miami, just for Limboden's sake, I hope that it is, the, you know, the right environment for him. He gets along with his teammates and he balls out. You know, I'm wishing him the best for sure. Yeah, it, you know, I agree with that, man. I, I hope he balls out and gets, gets, a, gets a good chance to play wide receiver and return some kicks. So. Right, right. All right, so uh, what else? What other surprises are we looking at here? I saw uh, Brandon you. Parker. Okay, Brandon Parker over Sam Young. <laughs> yes. It's yes, that is that was very in- interesting. But I do think they might bring Sam Young back. They probably just didn't want to give him guaranteed money, so they cut him, and then they'll bring him back after week one probably. Um, what 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 that tells us though too is that Trent Brown's probably ready to play. Right. Um, they, and they they feel comfortable with him ready to play, but I still think they're going to bring Sam Young back at some point. And but, then, uh, but it's interesting I, too because it could have been um, Sam Young, you know, the situation that you're talking about with the guaranteed money, and then David Sharp instead of Brandon Parker. Yeah, you yeah. know, because when it, look the tape does not lie. All right, look guys, tape don't lie. <laughs> David Sharp is a better tackle than Brandon Parker. You know, yes, or he has is. been on tape. So mm-hmm. it's, it's very it's very interesting. Obviously. Um, Brandon Parker, first of all, for the Raiders fans who might have forgotten about this guy, he's like an All American in D1 AA, like never gave up a sack in like however many years that he played tackle. You know, yeah. um, fantastic uh, length and arm length and all this stuff that you can't coach at all. You mm-hmm. know, definitely, a, you know, um, a, a, a more rare archetype, prototypical player than a David Sharp, you know, like if we're talking about it like that. So uh, maybe the tools are what they're, you know, banking on, and maybe we'll see if he comes in. Hopefully not, but if he comes in, maybe we'll see a different Brandon Parker than we've seen in the past. But what we've seen on tape, Brandon Parker is not a better tackle than David Sharp, so it's interesting that they went that direction. Yeah, he just doesn't have the technique to me, man. Uh, he just he's all, There's always something wrong every time you watch him. It's like either his hands are too late. Uh, he lets the guy get his, his hands inside him for a bull rush. He's, he's bending uh, over at the waist. You know, he's lunging at guys. It's it's really bad technique. I agree. It's 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 really bad technique. It's every single time, and it hasn't changed. I mean, I don't know what he's doing the off season, but like I figure, like with that athletic the the athletic profile that he has, he's he's an athletic freak for a tackle. That's why right. you know the the Raiders ended up taking him or feel like they they can mold him into something because the end of the day, he's an athletic freak, right? For a left tackle, he can move. He, he's he's got the long arms, like you said. He's got the size. He's an athletic freak for a left tackle, but you got to have the technique to play in the NFL. It doesn't right. matter if, you, if you're a freak. If you're letting guys get their hands inside and beat you inside and getting leverage, you're not even getting your hands on them at all. Or if you're doing like the bear hug technique where you're trying to like do the whole bear hug thing instead of, you know, keeping yeah. your hands inside. Yeah, you're, you're going to yeah. get ate up. Yeah. So. Mitchell Schwartz is proof that you do not need to be an athletic freak. You know, to be a great yeah. tackle. Donald Penn, another guy, savvy, savvy, all technique, you know. Yeah. Uh, these these guys, you know, a lot of guys have proven you don't need to be a, a freak athlete to be a, a great tackle in the NFL. So, but yeah, yeah. we'll see. We'll see about Brandon Parker. I'm definitely going to, you know, write about him tomorrow for Just Blog, baby. Uh, so stay tuned for that, Raider Nation. But yeah, Brandon Parker definitely should have been a guy. I think um, should have been on the outs instead of someone else. Yeah, they like him, I guess. Uh, another another guy that kind of shocked me was the Kendall Vickers one. Yeah, that I was... saw that, I saw that you uh, tweeted about that. That's definitely a shocker. I I defy you guys. Tweet us, you know, send us the link. Someone prove to us that you had Kendall Vickers in your. Because <laughs> I, I I don't know where prove that came it. from. Show me the. I hear word. <laughs> I hear a word about him at camp, but he's he's, he's stuck in. He's just, oh, shit. don't don't get, send me a photoshopped uh, screenshot, okay? <laughs> I, I need proof that you had him in your final fifty three. No one made no one made that guess. And what's yeah. really interesting to me, first of all, he's listed as a DM, but he's not a DM. He's not a yeah. DM. He's um he's a three technique in this defense. Okay, mm-hmm. if they do have him playing technique, it's going to be exclusively on rundowns. Uh, but you know, he doesn't have the size that you, uh, that you see in a Paul Gunther defense. He wants all his, uh, defensive ends to be, you know, six, four, six, five, six, six kind of guys. Uh, 
Yeah. And, you know, this guy's like, you know, he's he's a squad of your guy. He's 6'3", 300 pound um, defensive lineman. That's a tackle. That's not a defensive end in Paul Gunther's scheme. So yeah. when you look at, you know, Malik Collins, he's got that three techniques on up. You know, Maurice Hurst is going to rotate in. So where's Kendall Vickers figure into all of this? I think that for that reason, it's a little bit of a shocker for me that they're going with yeah. five defensive linemen. Um, but, yeah, we'll see how it ends up working out. Yeah, I mean, he must have had a good camp. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's just odd that, you know, nobody's talking about him. But I, I feel like this whole camp, I mean, the Raiders have kept everybody in the dark. I feel like it's been a big. You know, I've been calling the CIA Raiders for the longest because I feel like yeah, they've been yeah, leaving yeah. everybody in the dark with everything. And we never heard it, a word about Kendall Vickers. Uh, but, I, you know, I, uh, I went and pulled up his uh, his old Tennessee tape um, from uh, when he played at Tennessee. And they, they were playing him as a, a five and a four technique. So, I mean, he is an inside guy. Um, He's when an inside guy. Three, yeah, He's definitely an inside guy. And it, that's what that's what that's what I'm saying. It's like I don't I don't see the scheme fit. But we'll see. Ron Marinelli is going to coach the the dog piss out of him. So you know, yeah. if Ron Marinelli likes him and he gets that you know vote of confidence, I think uh, Raider Nation should get on board. Yeah, he, he could be another guy too that just you know that made the initial fifty three, and then when he wants to add people, they might let him go. So I mean, that is another thing because uh, we we know they're going to pick up somebody from the waiver wire. I don't know who who they're going to pick up, but I mean, he might be that last guy out too. I mean, he made the initial fifty three, and then they goes they wave him after they pick somebody up and then end up maybe put him on the pra- uh, their practice squad. Cause obviously they like him enough to put him on the initial 53. Right. So they like, they, there's something that they like about him and he, he's obviously been a pro before. So playing in the CFL. So he's got a little, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what they saw, but they saw something. All right. Real Raider two zero five five. He, sh- he uh, shout out real Raider two zero five five. Thanks for listening. Right. bro. He's saying Crosby mentioned him in a uh, in an interview, so I, I didn't pick that up. But there you go, you know. Okay. Um, I guess we got to you know keep our ears to the turf a little harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, man. I, I got to read those transcripts. I get from Raiders Wire. That's what I got to do. I got to read those transcripts to keep that. Yeah, but as I'm saying, if you got a shout out from somebody else, I mean that that, that means he was balling in camp. But yeah. it's just interesting that he would get a shout out from Crosby, but no beat writer would notice that he's balling out in camp yeah, either. Yeah. Or he, they might just assume that he's not going to make it because of whatever else. Right. You know? Yeah. Cause the backlog at that, at that position. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's definitely interesting, but yeah, we'll see, you know, um, we'll see how, how big a Kendall Vickers fans we turn into here. You know? <laughs> Kendall or, or, so, or some people are going to start saying Maurice Hurst is on the roster bubble now. You feel <laughs> me? Like something like that. Kendall yeah. Vickers is coming for his job. We'll see. Yeah, Kendall, <laughs> Kendall Vickers. Man. <laughs> oh man. And then uh, uh, down 11 made it again. Which uh, you know, I, I guess that's, that's a special teams move, but uh, he All made right. the team again. All right, he's okay. a survivor. He's a survivor, that's for sure. Uh, he's a survivor. I don't know about that. He's, he's I a, don't know. He must be a Gruden grinder. Okay, like that must be Gruden's fourth or fifth son at this point. You know, uh, they they love this guy. So look, I, I've seen it. I've, I watched him tape when he came in spot duty. Mm-hmm. He's not a viable option uh, on defense. Yeah. Uh, we saw that clip where um, uh, Darren Waller was putting him in the spin cycle, you know, throwing throwing him off the frame with a little push by, throw by uh, technique on that route that he caught. Uh, you know, I just don't think this guy's going to make any impact on defense. And when you look at Harris, he's been a core special teamer. He yeah. is going to be a core special teamer. Um, and now Dallin Levitt, that's another special teamer at safety. I just think, you know, you could have asked Demarius Randall to play some special teams for you, you know, a little bit, and he would have provided a lot more upside in coverage going against the Chiefs, you know, going against the Denver passing attack that will, you know, we'll see if that comes to fruition, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm confused by Dallin Levitt, honestly. Yeah, I mean, even worse than the Waller take is the, the Witten one. So have you seen the waiting? Oh, one? Oh, I, I didn't even. I don't think I even noticed that that was down eleven. So there you go. <laughs> that's, that's even worse, bro. So that's the worst one. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you know, like, so I, I mean, he's a special teams guy. They they are big in special teams. I mean, that, if that if that's what they want, that's what they want. But you're right. If this, I think the safety depth is a little, a little interesting. I mean, Jeff Heath. I mean, he made the team. He's he's obviously to get some playing time. So is Eric Harris. Uh, I mean, what what are your thoughts on Eric Harris? What, what are your thoughts? I like Eric Harris. I yeah. like him. He's he's not going to play man coverage. 
He's exclusively a high safety, which is interesting because he's 6'2", 220. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but th- his game is about getting eyes on quarterback, pattern matching, and I think he does a fantastic job anticipating um, routes open okay. uh, downfield. I think he's fantastic in cover four, and I think he's got, some, uh, you know, they, he has enough anticipation. And there's, I, I'll show you the clips. He gets to the sideline from when he's in the post in cover one. You know, yeah. uh, you wouldn't think, you know, um, you think that maybe he's not fast enough to do that, but you you gotta you gotta do that with anticipation. It's not just about speed. You yeah. Know? So uh, I like him as a deep safety, whereas Heath. And this is why I think this is an interesting kind of safety group that they've uh, created here. Heath is like exclusively a strong safety. You yeah, know, he's I a see. box guy. You know, um, if if you want to go dime, I think that he's a great option to put. You know, as that money a money backer, that dime la- linebacker type. He's mm-hmm. almost as good as you know uh, your average linebacker defending the run. He, you know, he's beating blocks. You know, uh, making his surface area real small, using his hands to get off guys. Um, his tape is fantastic in the box, but you know when you look at him in uh, in man coverage, it's not so great. So I think uh, Abram is going to have to be the guy that's going to be you know coming down and playing man on, on tight ends, or maybe that's going to be Corey Littleton's job. But I, I just don't see it's it, you know what I'm trying to say is yeah Abram will be strong in safety, Harris will be free safety, but if Harris gets hurt, he's not a free safety. So so okay, but. I will say this. I mean, Abram did play a little free safety in college. It's going to have to be Abram, right? Yeah. I mean, he did play a little free safety, and he has a speed and the range to do it. He's got the speed. I just and, – and, and you know, for me, for Abram, it's always about coverage. I don't know if Abram can guard tight ends and, and things like that consistently. Um, I, I know he had problems with TJ Hawkinson a lot. He'll have, he um, have to prove it. He'll have to prove it. For sure. He'd have to prove that. And I know – he because right now he's just kind of just basically a box safety, safety himself. Uh, so he, he's gonna have to prove that he could do that. But he did play some some free safety in Mississippi State. He basically played both safeties, he's kind of versatile. So he, if if Harris does get hurt, he might have to move up there, and then Heath would have to come in and move down. Yeah, have to work him in like that. But I mean, that kind of goes back to you know, uh, I know you, you cut Demarius uh, Randall, right? You cut him it, it just just you know so you could play. Jeff Heath or whatever you want to keep or whatever you want to do or because you want to keep down Levitt because he adds more to special teams. But then that goes back to having depth. If Eric Harris does go down, you can put Randall back to the free, play free safety. Right. So, it, you know, it's all, it's, I guess it's all it's what you want to look at it as. Uh, I know Eric Harris hasn't, hasn't got hurt yet, but I mean, anything can happen. So, you know. we Yeah. I mean, uh, Harris is the only guy who has tape, you know, proven tape in the post on this team. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I think Heath could play deep in a cover three. He can get from one scene to the to the next scene. He's just not getting to the sideline on you. Yeah. It's it's not happening. Um and I watched a lot of Jeff Heath tape, so I can say that with a lot of confidence. You know, he's not a cover one safety, deep safety. He could play cover three deep safety. You know, but yeah. I think I think he's honestly mostly his own guy. I don't like his man coverage either. So uh We'll we'll see we'll see how it, what it ends up shaking up as but yeah the the I I didn't like the safety depth and then they got Demarius Randall and I felt okay about it but now I'm back to panicking a little bit you feel me yeah <laughs> yeah my, I, I get it's my uh, <laughs> I'm at my uh, in laws house it's, uh, they got a cat over here. he's bothering me I I locked him down in the basement with me on accident and now I can't oh, okay there's no going back now <laughs> there's no going back with the cat <laughs> yeah that's funny bro uh, yes so. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think Eric Harris, you know, he's he's very solid, too. I think he's uh, very solid. Uh, I, I know um, he, he definitely has the range and all that stuff. But, you know, sometimes I do think he, he can make some some mental lapses. I, I don't know, if, you know, what you, what you see from that. Uh, but I do know sometimes, like, I, I don't know. I, I guess with the – Are you talking uh, about the Colts uh, game uh, where Eric Ebron across the middle of the field? Yeah, Before, that it was, a, it, it was a blitz. Uh, it was a blitz look, and he mistimed it and let up that big catch at the end of the game. That yeah, so things one. like that, and it, or it, even like I'll I'll say this. I, I know that AJ AJ Brown plays not really on him, but it's it's kind of like when I'm watching that. It's, it's AJ it's, Brown. It's, AJ Brown plays on Worley. They're on cover four. Oh yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. But it's kind to me. It's kind of like it's like you know if nobody's around, it's kind of like you just want to find something. I guess it's kind of just how I look at what's I'm running like quarters and cover four. I know sometimes you're just free and you're not covering anybody. Sometimes they just want you to find something and, and help, but you know, I'm just kind of nitpicking, I guess a little bit, but it, well, yeah, Harris is not a superstar. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> not 
Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> I guess you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm nitpicking a little bit, but you know, it's just it's just something like that because you know I, I understand just like from learning about quarters and stuff. Like sometimes when there's nobody to guard, they want you to just find something. They want you to go find. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, actually, uh, while we're on the topic, we can we can dive deep in this. It look it seems like the way that the Raiders are coached in, to play cover four is yeah. that they play with more of a flat foot read, and they're taking away the dig of number one, but not the post of number one. And it's, okay. it's on the corner to take the post of number one because okay, uh, because um, the safeties, it seems like in Paul Gunther's defense, the safeties need to take, if number two goes out, and, you know, and vertical, you know, mm-hmm. like on a wheel route or, you know, something like that, they need to be able to take that guy. So they're not worrying about the post. They're only worrying about the dig if two goes away. Yeah. it's That's what it seems like to me in, in the, when they play quarters. Um, but, you know, what the hell do I know? I, I could be completely wrong about that. Um, yeah. but uh, yes, but I, there are some plays, there was one play against Houston where, um, where Eric Harris is playing cover four to the back side of the formation. So he's on the, he's on the single man side of the formation and yeah. they got trips to the field side and Carl Joseph is the, is the deep safety on that side. And they're playing a cover four concept and Harris makes a fantastic play because he identifies that the number one on his side is not going vertical and he comes across the field and he takes away uh, the post from number three, and he's able to get a pass breakup. And it was it was a uh, sure touchdown. Carl just got beat on it, you know. So yeah, uh, I, I think that he's. Made, I mean, look, look at that interception return for a touchdown against um, the Colts. All yeah. those plays that he made against, um, you know, Chargers. Uh, Philip Rivers. You know, mm-hmm. uh, he's he's living in Philip Rivers' head rent free. This guy, um, I think he has got a lot of anticipation, which is not something I think that you can just go ahead and coach in a guy. And I yeah. think some of the things, some of the mistakes that we've seen him make, more so in 2018, it was, you know, just like, you know, he's not running to the right leverage when he's the force defender and he's giving up the outside or, you know, it's little small te- technical things that yeah. produce a big result. And, and, you know, all of a sudden you've got the magnifying glass on you. Um, but I, I think a lot of the mistakes that we've seen Eric Harris make are solvable. And yeah. As long as he's... You know, he's a playing in the cover four, he's playing deep, and he's not being asked to play man coverage on guys or something like that. I think he's good. I think okay. he's good money. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. What else? What else we got? So what do you think about the running back room altogether? We only got three right now. They kept Devontae Booker. Yeah, it's weird. Well, here, I'll say this. I'm from Sacramento, California. Shout out 916, okay? Um, okay. Devontae Booker, he's from Sacramento, California, and he's like a legend, okay? He went to Grant High School. So I've been following okay. this guy's career, you know, uh, you know, basically his entire life. Um, you know, high school, and, you know, and on. So I'm a big mm-hmm. fan of Devontae Booker. Um, he went to Utah, right? Yeah. He went to Utah. And then I was always waiting for him to do something for the Broncos, you know, just being a fan of football. I wanted to see Devontae Booker do well because, you know, he's from Sacramento. Not that I was rooting for the to the, for the Broncos, Raiders fans. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I was rooting for the guy when the when the Raiders weren't playing him, right? I wanted him to, mm-hmm. to, to see something out of him. And yeah. uh, he just never had many uh, – you know, I don't think he's made much of an impact in the NFL yet, you know? So it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting guy when you think, okay, the Raiders could have had theoretic. Theoretics made a big impact in the NFL, right? Um, yeah. You could have had uh, a, a lot of other guys that we see coming in and out of the out of the room here, and they went with Devontae Booker. So I'm hoping, you know, the light turned on for Devontae Booker. At Devontae Booker's best, I think he's better than De- DeAndre Washington. Oh, uh, that's for not, sure. That's not saying much, though, let's be honest. It's not saying much at all. You're right. I, I, I think that uh, Booker is a scheme fit. Um, I mean, he's his own back. He runs outside best. zone. He's outside zone pretty good. Uh uh, I mean, that, that's kind of what they do uh, in Denver. I don't know. If, I don't know if they're going to do that this year, but I mean, that's what they were doing back then. Uh, and and he's he's a pretty good catching outside of, outside out, uh, out of the backfield too. So I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting. That's what, the how thing they about him. that's the thing about DeAndre Washington. He was not a uh, a fit in the zone scheme. He was a gap no. power runner. That's like if you go back to his Texas Tech film, DeAndre Washington was running you know up the middle. He was making that decisive move and just going. That wasn't like he didn't need a whole bunch of wiggle and a whole bunch of vision yeah. in his game. It was just like a little bit side to side and stepping through tackles. But he was, you know, a north and south guy who ran out of a power a gap scheme. 
And I just don't think that he ever was comfortable running in that, in that outside zone scheme, you know? Yeah. Think about all the DeAndre Washington plays that you saw. They were all catches out of the backfield. All the good ones. Exactly. He, was, exactly. he wasn't making an impact as a runner. Yeah. And, and even and even his rookie year when he had a lot of those long runs, I mean, the, the Raiders were more of a power run team back then anyways. Right. That point so uh i mean exactly. they, they weren't really they weren't really the outside zone type of team that they are now or inside outside zone mid zone i mean they're they're weeks uh you know wide zone whatever zone you like the right. writers do a All lot that. and at and at a high level though they do it at a high level yeah. too even with the guys and even like gabe jackson i mean gabe jackson not really a fit for outside zone or zone but he's he's still doing well i mean they're they're all pretty good there and um so I mean, Booker fits there. He, he fits that aspect of, of being a running back for the Raiders in the zone scheme, in the zone game. But, you know, how I feel, I mean, I think the Raiders just need a uh, a guy who could run power just for the red zone. But I, I think that they're probably d- d- hoping that Jacobs Develop. takes that next step yeah, right. yeah, in those power concepts and those power in the power run game to to be able to to be better in the red zone. Let's and, see how uh, much finish. they use it, though. Let's see how much. We'll see, man. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, it, it's like – in certain times inside the three, I mean, you can't run, you know, we talked about that in the podcast. You can't run outside zone from the three, man. I mean, you got to run straight ahead and, and Jacob has to be better at seeing those holes. So if, if he becomes better at seeing those holes and finding things and being more, a little bit more patient when he's running uh power, then they won't need a power back to, to run in the red zone. Like, yeah, like fans want. But I mean, that's what have Booker do that. That's right. what Devontae Booker is. He's you know he's not he's not a home run threat back. You know, but he's yeah. he's a guy who's gonna um, you know he runs a physicality. That's kind of his style. So uh, I, I think that but let's put it like this: Josh Jacobs and then Devontae Booker is like Josh Jacobs light or diet Josh Jacobs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it might be bad you say that at, at best. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what I'm saying. Cause I, I, coming out of Utah, man, I love Devontae Burger. I thought he was going to be really good. And I was mad the Broncos took him too. I thought he was going to be a lot better than he, he is. Right. Because um, I mean, like he he's in when he was in college, man, he used to he was hard to tackle. Like nobody could tackle him, and yeah. uh, he was breaking tackles like crazy. So hopefully that's the guy that we're getting. Because if 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 the guy that that was supposed to come out of college is Devontae Booker, we get then. I mean, the Raiders should be fine, even with going with the three backs. But, you know, they still might add somebody. Who knows? They're, they're going to add it back. They're going to add it back. You can't get through the NFL season with only three backs. Can't do it. Yeah. They're going to <laughs> they're gonna get beat up too much. So I, I, I wonder if they're looking at AP. That's, that's what I'm wondering. I mean. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I wonder if they're looking at all day. <laughs> AD all day. I don't know. Uh, I mean, well, it would be interesting if they bring in Adrian Peterson because Adrian Peterson is the type of guy, like, if, if – they started giving him the ball and he started doing well. Like, do you keep giving him the ball? Like, you know, it's, it's you know, and John, I mean, with, you got with the veteran. To. You got to, you know, it's, it's AP at the end of the day. No, no, <laughs> you know? no. he's not, he's, he's not going to take away from Josh Jacobs. You know, it's not like, it's not like it's Doug Martin or something back there. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> Uh, we got we got a we, we got ourselves a real back Raider Nation. So yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I think AP would if he actually came in and and they actually played him at the role that they needed him to play. I think he'd be fine. But it, it's, it'd be more about like you know once he gets going, like I mean, compare AP to an NBA player. I have one in my head. We, we, I'm putting you on the spot right now. An NBA player, the, career, to the career trajectory. Okay. I'll say I'll say mine first. I'll say mine first. Okay, okay. Because I'm trying to like. I'll say Vince Carter. Are you? Because that's who I was gonna go with. But, You're okay. gonna go with You're that? Okay, Vince? okay, yeah, okay. So we agree. So we agree. He's like, yeah, he he he's a savvy vet. He knows his game, but he's not the explosive game changer that he once was. You know, but he's still playing at this ancient age, which is miraculous you know what i'm saying because i was gonna go with vince but i was thinking man vince was never as good as he as as ap was right, right. <laughs> that's what i was trying to... <laughs> it's like he's never as good as he was and i mean but it, if you bring in if you bring him in i i think that would be a, a good fit to be honest but we'll see about that and he'll probably be cheap well i would like about it more than anything more than anything okay is mentoring josh jacobs oh yeah sh- showing him how you, you know, how you play the game the right way, how you stay healthy, how you take care of your body, all, all those things. 
and even provide a cautionary tale because I don't know if you know this about AP, but he like um, his accountant or something like that or a business partner like basically took all his money, which is the reason why yeah. he's still playing to this day, is because he's like basically broke. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. you know, even to, you know, to kind of show guys, you know, maybe some mistakes that he's made along the way, because AP should be like the the highest earning running back in the history of football, and he's like not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's sad. It's sad. It's terrible to think about that. But I, I'm rooting for AP no matter what. But yeah, that'd be awesome if he came in silver and black. That'd be that'd be dope. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what you think about um, the wide receiver cuts? Well, obviously we talked about Tyrell Williams last time. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you think? It was it wasn't too surprising. Uh, once Tyrell Williams got cut, I mean, not. I mean, they they took Rico Gafford over the other guys, um, but I mean that that goes just goes to speed. I mean, Marshall Aitman, I mean, we, we've we've seen him try enough. We don't, we don't need to see any more. I guess I mean Keelan Doss could have got another shot, but you know we have kind of seen enough with him too a little bit. Um, Keelan, see the thing about Keelan Doss that you can't say about Marcelo Aitman is Keelan Doss has no special teams value at all. So when you're yeah. the sixth wide receiver, you you can't play special teams like you can't make a roster like that. You know, exactly. Um, but Marcel Aitman, he did play special teams. But the, the reason why I stopped being a Marcel Aitman fan, not that I was ever like a big Marcel Aitman fan, but I stopped believing in this guy when last year during Hard Knocks, Derek Carr was uh, went over to him and was like, man, you know, run, run it 100 percent or something like that. Or, you know, you, like you got to go for it. Like, I guess they had an incompletion. And Marcel Aitman was like, in the game, I got you in the game. I got you. And Derek Carr <laughs> said. Practice how you play, man. What do you mean in the game? I got you, right? As as soon as I heard that from Marcel, I mean, I was like, nah, this guy doesn't know what it's all about, you know? Like, yeah, you can't have it on and off switch, you know? Like, <laughs> the game, I got you. You throw it to me in the game, I'll get, I'll get it for you. Like, why will you get the ball thrown to you in the game? Then? <laughs> you know, you can't even catch one in practice, you know? Like, so I I stopped believing in Marcel Aitman, you know, after that. So I'm glad they went with, with Rico, and honestly, mm -hmm. with with Bowden out. You know, um, and Nelly probably is going to have a good, um, you know, a, a good amount of targets. You know, we're mm. talking about probably like 30, 40 target year for uh, Nelson Aguilar. You can't count on Nelson Aguilar to, to just be a return guy. You know, you got to yeah. get someone like Gafford in there who should have some, you know, um, some, you know, less traction on the tires. He's not going to be, you know, a, a 40 uh, target guy. You know, he might be like a 20 target guy this year. Or something like that, but he's going to be prim primary return specialist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I mean, and that's that's what he offers. I mean, he offers that speed as a return specialist. You know, uh, I mean, as a wide receiver, he really didn't run that many like a route tree right now. I mean, even in Wyoming. Well, what's interesting about because the um, Titans moved him to corner when they drafted him. Yeah. Right. So he played. I don't know if he. He. I think he played in the NFL. He has reps at corner in a game. Right. Oh, wow. See, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe it was just preseason. Um, okay. But then, you know, he, he got waived or released or whatever it was, and the Raiders brought him in. But they wanted him to be go back to wide receiver, which I guess is what he played at Wyoming, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I think that really he's going to be a gunner. If he if he yeah. has reps playing corner, it means he should be able to tackle. He's going to be yeah. one of the gunners uh, on this team. So I think uh -huh. that that is probably a, one of the biggest reasons too. Yeah. Yeah, and, and his speed too. I mean, you can't forget yeah. the speed. Gosh, yeah, right. right. It, 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 uh, he said he's been getting, he's been working on his route running too. So I mean, if his route running's improved, uh, and it has improved, then I mean, that's a that's a good thing too. So I mean, I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he made the team, and uh, I mean, he didn't make it last year, and they ended up making it this year. So that's awesome for him. Yeah, definitely. Much love to Rico. Much love to Rico. Okay, so uh, let's let's round this up here. Uh, we talked about offensive line. Yeah. Um, we talked about wide receivers, talked about running backs. We didn't talk about quarterback yet. Do you think that Nate Peterman should be on this roster? No. Shout out to Matt Holder, but uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Matt. To Matt. But, no. Matt, Matt, uh, is a big, Matt is a big uh, Peterman fan, isn't he? He's a, he's yeah, a Peterman, he's a he's Peterman truther here. Okay? He's a Peterman truther over there. But uh, <laughs> um, no, I. I I don't know what that is, man. I was a little worried about that when they gave him that that million. I'm like, man, that's a 
That's a lot of money. That's but, Cam Newton money right at this point. No, and then, I'd be I'd be perfectly fine. I'd be perfectly fine with him getting a million dollars if if the Raiders didn't just pay the other backup quarterback like eight million dollars. Like, wait, how how much money are, are they spending on freaking backup quarterbacks right now? You know. And, and, and did you think about the extra spot that he gave up that he took up for somebody right. else? You could have got right. a guy, peanuts. Could have got your guy Anthony uh, Anthony Gordon, right? He just got released, you know. Yeah. Get Peterman out of here, okay? We got a backup. Marcus Mariota is a that's a bona fide backup in the NFL. You already got yeah. one. Now take a development guy. I don't know why they're paying this guy extra money to sit on the bench. He's gonna hold a clipboard, you know. A uh, million dollars to hold a clipboard. Shoot, bro. I wish I was six five. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Like, but what do they even see in him, though? That's my thing. It's weird, man. It's weird. Because in Hard Knocks, all he did was yell at him. I don't like all he did when he was in Hard Knocks. All he did was yell. He was just telling him that ripping him. Gruden was ripping uh, Peterman. It was embarrassing, you know. Peter, imagine Peterman's family watching that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then him not saying a word to Derek too. He didn't, he didn't like uh, yell at Derek or Mike Glennon. Right, right. It's he was weird. yelling. At, I, right. I don't, I don't know what they see in him, bro. I, I don't get it. I, I mean, he's thrown 12 interceptions in like three starts. I don't, I don't get it. Like, there's. Okay, uh, uh, we missed one position though. Okay. Um, well, first of all, our guy Kyle Wilbur is off the team. Right? Yes. Raiders linebacker depth has vastly improved. Okay. We are <laughs> in a good place, Raider Nation. Linebacker depth yes. is it, it's it's looking up. It's looking up. Here, it's okay? looking a lot better. Uh, Nicholas Morrow is our fourth worst linebacker. Okay, that's that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, the the other thing though is at corner, did they hold on? Did they cut Nevin Lawson? No, he's on um he's on a reserve. The reserve. Cause, yeah, because of suspension. Oh, All right, so that so. that goes back to like Vickers and like and guys like that. Like when Lawson comes back, do they cut Vickers or you know whatever? There's, there's, you know, guys kind of like hanging there that might get cut. Like maybe Isaiah Johnson ends up still getting cut so they could bring Nevin Lawson back. Or they or cut Ke- Nevin Lawson. Or, or they cut Nevin Lawson or they cut Keyshawn Nixon, right? There's uh, different ways that this could go for sure. Okay, because that, that's something I was looking at too. Um, but but my boy Keyshawn Nixon made it. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a big Keyshawn Nixon fan. That, that's the other gunner, you know, on, yeah. on punt. It's going to be uh, Keyshawn Nixon on one side. Uh, Rico Gafford most likely on the other side. So, uh, but yeah, we'll see if he sticks around after week one. Who, which which guy is going to get cut for Nevin Lawson, or if Nevin Lawson just gets cut? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, because you know, I bet they hang with Isaiah Johnson over Keyshawn just based on upside. And you know that is nothing. To, I mean, because Isaiah Johnson is the he's a big athletic freak, and he has tons of upside. A lot of upside. And, a lot of upside, and they they probably will stick with that over Keyshawn because he's undrafted, and yeah. he's, you know you know you know you know how that goes with draft capital. I mean, even though they're straight about it, about it, but uh, <laughs> I know it, it even even then though. Um, you mean Isaiah Johnson is the athletic freak? He has a crazy athletic profile. Um, I mean, he has a lot more potential. Like if they yeah. if, if he if he hits, then it's he could be one of the uh, a, uh, a very, very good corner. I can't even that. lie. I can't even lie. I was watching the combine and I did not know who Isaiah Johnson was. And I'm watching him go through all these drills and it's showing he ran a 4 4 2 and he's like six foot two. And all of a sudden I'm like, who is this guy? And he was moving really well. Like, I caught, yeah. it, he caught my eye because of how well he was moving in the drills, you know? Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. That's a, a really special uh, athletic profile. Uh, mm-hmm. Too bad we didn't get to really to see too much of it because I think he broke a bone in his face, you know, like in the preseason, and yeah. know, he just got spot duty. They brought him along real slowly, and they were willing to throw um, Keyshawn Nixon into the fray uh, late in the year when Trayvon Moore yeah. went out instead of Isaiah Johnson. So I know which is interesting, right? But but I think yeah. it's because Isaiah Johnson plays on the right side, and Trayvon okay. Moore was playing on the left side. Because I think that if uh, I think it's I think Isaiah Johnson is a right is a right corner, but I, I, don't, okay. I might be wrong about that. I don't I don't know. I, I know when he did play. When he did play, you might be right about that. Because when he did play uh, against the Bengals, I mean that's when he got his most snaps. He was on the right side the whole time. He was on the right side. Yeah, I think that that's kind of what it is. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, if he's a gifted enough athlete, he should be able to play both sides. But no, he's got to he's got to you know come along slowly here. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um. So yeah, we'll see how it all shakes out. Cause like you're saying, Nevin Lawson, there's gonna be another cut. We'll see if the Raiders pick up some of these other free uh, free agents who are you know uh, looking for homes now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, there's a lot of things that could go down. Like you're saying, Adrian Peterson might you know be a possibility for the team. Yeah. Like three running backs on the squad. Okay. One one more thing, uh, Raider Nation, stick with us here. Hold on. One more thing, Raider Nation. Uh, were you surprised that Derek Carrier made the team? No. I mean, we talked about that the other day. I, I'm not surprised about that. They kept four tight ends because they're probably not going to play Waller at, at tight end like we, like everybody thinks. So yeah. he's going to be playing a lot more like wide receiver. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He's going to play a lot more wide receiver, a lot more spread out. Because uh, even with the wide receivers they have now, I mean, I still don't expect him to go like 10 personnel. There's no tight ends on the field at all. So. Um, no, definitely not. They're going to yeah. be, they're going to be in a lot of 12. You know, a lot of twelve. Lot of which, 12. which I, I'm not, I'm not mad about, mad at that. Uh, I mean, I, they they should be getting all of the ball, but I mean, if you come in twelve, though, I mean, that means you have Renfro on the side, or do you play Renfro in the slot and play Rugs? You know, it's, it's, I mean, think there's a lot of things he could do. So I let's think just Renfro hope he's at his be- Renfro at his best is not going to be getting, you know, like more than eighty percent of the snaps in a game. He should be around, you know, like fifty, sixty percent of the snaps. Yeah. And if you ask any defensive coordinator at any level, at any level, it's tougher to defend 12 personnel when you have two great tight ends than it is to defend 11 personnel. Yeah. It's so much tougher. What what personnel do you bring in? Do you go nickel because they're passing threats? You know, and then you get gashed in the run game. You know, um, do you, you, you stay in base and then you get gashed in the pass game. So it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Um, whereas, you know, someone like Renfro, while he's going to, you know, he's going to uncover, he's going to do great things on third downs, you know, when it's obvious passing situations, I just don't think that he, uh, brings like that huge mismatch factor. Like if if Austin Moreau plays to his potential, like Darren Waller has been playing, uh, I think that's tougher for, um, defensive coordinators to figure that out when they're in 12. So, yeah, I agree with you. A lot of twelve. Derek Carrier is a lot because I think he's essentially like you're saying he's going to be the third wide. He's going to be the third tight end because Darren Waller's playing wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that that was not shocking shocking to me at all. I was yeah. not shocked about that. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any last words for Raider Nation? Uh, no, no last words. Uh, I think Raider Nation should be happy that we don't have that many undrafted free agents make it. I think that should be a good thing. You should think about that. Just think the Ravens didn't have any. If that tells you anything, that kind of like how you want your depth chart to look. So we're, we have a lot more depth and a lot of a lot of good players that, um, I mean, the roster's getting better, basically, is what I'm saying. The roster's right. way better than it was before or two years ago or so, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good thing that these some of these undrafted guys are going to the practice squad. Um, I mean, even if you feel like White might have played outplayed Muse, I mean, he still probably still make the practice squad too. So, you know, it's it, it's it's a good thing that there's a lot of guys missing. So, a lot of guys who are undrafted who didn't make the team. Right. This is this is a good problem to have, Raider Nation. When you see guys, you hear about them pr- playing really well in camp, and then they get cut because that just means the guys above them are playing even better. You know, like yeah. That, just think about it like that uh, when you have to make hard decisions to whittle down your roster, um, you know, from, you know, whatever it was, it was like in the eighties down to 53. That means there's a lot of good talent on the team. Um, obviously some things are going to sting, but just wait, wait and see how, uh, the Bowden, uh, thing plays out, you know, um, cause really it could go down looking like, you know, a solid move by Mike Mayock. If, uh, if Bowden isn't able to pan out in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, it'll always go back, go down as a bad draft pick, though. I mean, he's he's gonna have to take that L on the draft pick. It is what it is, though. I mean, he took the L early, which is different than a lot of it's teams to do. Right. That, yeah, I mean, and that's Mr. what Mr. I mean Bisky by still solid quarterback. Move. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, bro, Ryan Pace. No, but um, <laughs> but that's what I mean by it being a solid move. Not not like obviously it was a bad draft pick, you know. But yeah. Cutting bait earlier rather than later, um, you know, that could be viewed as a, as a solid move down the line, depending on how Limbaugh, you know, shakes out in Miami. So we'll see about it. 
Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, any last words from you, man? Any thoughts? That's it. That's it, man. I was actually I was at the beach today. I, I live in New Jersey now, and I'm walking down the beach, and I hear and I got I got Raiders gear on, right? And I hear mm -hmm. Raiders, right? And yeah. Like Raider Nation is out here in New Jersey. You know, we're nationwide. We're around the globe. You know, so thank you for all the listeners out there. It doesn't matter where you're at. You're in Raider Nation. Uh, subscribe, follow, follow us on YouTube. You can listen to us on Apple and Spotify, Tape Don't Lie podcast. Yes, sir. Yeah, and make sure you follow us on Twitter too at the March on NFL, at the Bill Williams 18. Uh, yeah, and thank you guys for joining us. We love, appreciate you. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.